In this lesson, we'll talk about doing 2D inside of Unity. So let's jump in to Unity. We've already got it open. I've also got our Unity with Cocktails demo source project, same project we've used for all videos. In the folder of Assets, Unity with Cocktails, Lessons 2.5 2D, we've got a um, sample scene set up. And go ahead and play that real quick so we can see what happens. Okay, I've got a character walking along. Okay. Now let's talk about scene setup. So obviously Unity is, if I create a new scene briefly, Unity is created for doing 3D. That's really all it can do. But let me go ahead and create a cube, create a directional light on that cube, and then zoom in and grab our camera. And I will align with view. Align with view is very helpful. It makes the selected main camera uh, game window look just like the scene window. So when I click that, it it makes the scene view over here. Very useful way to move your camera. So if I go ahead and press play, you know, just like you would assume and like in our past videos, we were rendering a 3D view. We're able to see three of the sides of that cube. Right? Even if we move our camera around so that it looks dead on, and then go ahead and do the same trick with the line of view, we're actually seeing some distortion there because we're looking at a 3D view, right? And if we go to the camera selection and look at the camera component, we have lots of options here. Clear flags allows us to uh, decide what should not render in the object, what is actually the background. Okay, so we'll leave that as the default. You can change the background color here something different if you wanted. You can um, have certain things not render. So by default everything will render, but if you wanted something to not render in the view for any reason, you could um, you could do that there. Uh, then we'll skip these for a moment because that's the meat that we want to get to. Uh, inside the clipping planes, this says that if anything is 0.3 units from the camera or further, it will render. And if it's 1,000 units away or closer, it will render. So if you move this value to, let's say, 10, and then start shrinking it down, let me manipulate the view here like that. Oops. That one, I'm going to change this far right. Yeah, just like that. So when far is too low of a value, you can see it doesn't even render the whole cube because the cube is maybe its closest point is about two units, but its furthest point is you know maybe three or four. So we're not rendering the whole thing. So the default values is actually going to render all the way behind the cube and much, much, much further into a thousand spaces in the background. In general, you want to leave those the same value. But if you ever found that you were very close to an object and part was not rendering, let's say something like this, line the view. You can see we get some kind of bizarre rendering here where part of the gray is rendering and part of this is not. And that's because we're too close. We're actually closer than 0.3. So you could either tweak that near value or you could just back the camera up a little bit. <clears throat> Um, yeah, there's some other settings there outside the scope of what we want to talk about. The core for, for thinking about 2D gaming inside this 3D tool, Unity, is the projection. So by default we're using perspective, which means objects that are farther away in 3D space look smaller. So these are a duplicated the same object but the one that is closer looks bigger and the one that is further away looks smaller, right? like you'd expect. In a lot of your games you're going to want that effect, you're going to want it to be 3D. However, if you're doing 2D gaming in Unity, you still render a full 3D scene, but what you want to do with the main camera is change to what's called orthographic. 
And what that's going to do here on the right is that's going to make objects even further from the screen or closer to the screen, it's going to make them the same size. And then I'm going to change how kind of zoom level we are and set that this way. So now you can see the left view is perspective, but the right view is not. It's what's called orthographic, right? So that gives us kind of an ISO look or a two and a half D look, and that might be useful for your games. Now if we move the camera perspective perfectly uh, from the side, which I can do with the camera more easily by going to transform and setting its rotation to say zero, zero, zero. With orthographic, a size that is appropriate to the scale you want, and a camera locked at zero, 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 we're able to stare straight at the sides of these objects, and even though one is further than the other, the size appears to be the same. <clears throat> and that's likely the setup that you want for your camera in a 2D game. Okay, So let me jump back into our project. And that's exactly the setup that I've got here. I've got a projection of orthographic, a size of 10, but you can tweak that around. That's just the zoom. You're going to want to set that once and just use it. And then um, we've got the camera locked in at zero. In this case, I've got zero, zero, zero. Okay. Now, what do we do? Do we want to put a bunch of cubes out there? You certainly could put text textured cubes into your scene and use them. But if you think about a cube having six sides, we don't necessarily want to render all six of those sides. So what developers did traditionally was use <clears throat> the plane. Some developers would create their own custom solution, but one default optimization is, okay, I don't want a whole uh, cube, so let me just use a plane. Okay, But you can see actually by looking at this, there's a lot of geometry in a plane. Every one of these triangles is uh, something for the renderer to think about. So luckily, in the latest version of Unity, which I'm running right now, 4.2, they added a quad object. In a quad, if I was to create a new quad here, available in Game Object Create Other Quad, you can see it's two triangles. Right? So it's, a, it's an optimization on the idea of using a plane, which is too many triangles. So here the computer processing only needs to think about rendering two triangles. Okay. So I've used a uh, cube here. Sorry, I've used a quad here. And then I've added a texture to it. And that texture is, let's take a look at it, materials. Um, it's an unlit transparent, or you could just do unlit texture. Okay. That means that we don't need to light it, we just want it to be fully bright. And depending on the way you want your game to work, you might choose a different shader. But for me, that works great. And then uh, I'm actually mapping this object onto it, which looks like two people. Uh, one where his legs are apart, and one where his legs are together. So how do I actually get just one guy on there at a time? Well, on the quad itself, uh, sorry, on the material maybe? Let me take a look here. Yeah, on the material itself, by clicking the <clears throat> title, we can see that by default, with a tiling of one, it puts the entire image onto that surface. Okay, but what the trick we want to do to do animation is I've got that object is um, 300 by 300 where the left half is one character and the right half is another. So by setting tiling in the X to 0.5 it's just going to render the first half. Then I've got some code onto uh, this quad animation component. We're extending mono behavior I've set up a few variables for counting, and let's take a look. So on update, I'm going to count up current count by using the plus plus. Every time it reaches max animation count, which is 10, I'm going to step into this loop. I'm going to reset counter. So the line 86 to 89 is just going to say 
count to 10 and then do what's inside the if. Then count to 10 and do what's inside the if. The reason that we count to 10 is because we want there to be a little bit of delay. We don't want this actually running every update. So we're going to do this counter setup. If we increased max animation count to 20, we would see the animation appear to have been slower. Now, to do the animation, we're going to change that texture offset, the same value that we saw in quad um, texture, this same value here, I'm changing that offset. I'm changing it by 1.5 each time. Okay. Um, so I experimented with the values there, and what we're doing is, you can imagine that we're Got to lock locked up there for a second. You can imagine that we are showing 0.5, and then we're showing 1.5, or 2. No, I'm sorry. 0.5. Sorry, offset. 1.5. Yeah. So no offset, and then we're showing an offset of 1.5. Then no offset. Then an offset of 1.5. Okay, and that's actually stepping through the left half of the image, the right half of the image. And when we go ahead and play that, it looks like he's walking. Get rid of that preview, we don't need it. All right. Then to actually move the quad itself, I'm going to do a translation. And you can see the world coordinates here, y is up and x is to the right. We ignore z because we don't care the z depth. Then. Then what we will do is we will um, just move the object that way. So in the rendering, um, we get the animated walk cycle. And then with the translate, we get the movement. So those two things combined work just like that. Now, an important part to note is that um, this is quite a bit of work. You can see that if we want to play this walk cycle and have him walk to the right forever, I've pretty much done that. But if we wanted something more complex where there was 10 frames to him walking, 10 frames to him jumping, 5 frames for him shooting a gun, getting hit by, it could be quite complex to manage all of those offsets and tiling and etc. So what I want to show is that from the slash unity main page on my site, there's uh, lots of good information. One of them is an article I wrote called Essential Unity 3D Plugins and Packages. So the asset store, which is available within Unity, allows you to download free and premium packages. Each package can do new functionality for your project, either extending the editor itself or giving you a new API to code to with your C Sharp language. And one of them that I want to talk about is called 2D Toolkit. So in this script um, here you can see the price, the link, the alternatives, uh, some buzz about it, all of this information that I wrote or uh, some of it I took from around the community. And there are several options for what you can do in the alternatives list. These are a series of libraries that will help facilitate doing 2D development. You still set up your camera the same way, but then for animating the walk cycles of characters and doing much, much more. Um, here's a list of them, including the price. Um, there's a lot of momentum around 2D Toolkit. Um, they're releasing versions quite quickly, and it's very capable. And at a price of 65, there might even be a, a sale going on where it's where it's been discounted uh, at this time. You can check it out from the asset store link here and jump right in. And what that's going to net let you do is, you know, some of the features are listed here, but you're going to be able to do the walk cycles much more quickly, and you're going to be able to manage your assets of that character in many different positions much more quickly, and able to, you're able to do much much more as well. So feel free to take a look at this link. I talk about uh, things beyond just 2D, um, but specific to our talk here, uh, we've kind of seen the long way to do the math, and by using 2D Toolkit, that's the calculator that's going to simplify all of the low operations that we need to do. 
and really uh, get you started in 2D gaming in a much more quick way. Uh, I think that's it. Let me just jump back to the project and see. Uh, we've hit everything here. We've looked at the image. We've looked at the material. Uh, we talked about all the scripts, which in this case is just the doing the animation on the quad. And uh, that's it. One final look. There's our guy walking. All right, that's it. Thanks very much.